Hey all, I'm just coming to you to give you an update of how my training is. Um, this is my uh, fourth week in training and so far it's been so good. It's been really well uh, at KLLM. Um, they really focus a lot on safety and making sure that you're not driving um, tired, that you get enough rest so you can... Um, so you can uh, uh, drive and take enough breaks that you need. Um, the first day I started driving um, at night because it was a load that uh, I had to get there, but we wasn't able to get it there um, safely on time. So they had to switch it out because both myself and my trainer was up all that day getting a truck fixed and getting ready to go and things like that. So. Um, they did like a swap out and we went another way, another route. The miles have been um, very good. We haven't had to sit long at all anywhere. We usually get a load before we even drop off the load that we currently have. We already know where we're going to our next um, location. Um, so far I've been to um, like the middle um, Middle East, I want to say South, uh, Miss the South, Texas, uh, Indiana, Illinois, um, Chicago area, Oklahoma. Um, we steadily um, are running. Uh, the first week, I was able to get my shifting down pack where it's not grinding. I finally got the concept of. Uh, shifting on the lower side because on the high side I was very good at it um, but the low side is what I had trouble with so um, because in school you start at four and work your way up but when you're loaded down you have to start in two and work your way up so um, I've been getting all my cards like my discount cards from the Flying J, the Pilot, the Petro it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I mean, the showers are really nice. We get to take a shower every other day. Not every day, but every other day, which is okay. And um, my trainer is really nice. I mean, he's he's got a um, three-year safety award, safety uh, thing. Uh, he believes in uh, taking your time, not rushing if you're tired. Uh, get off the road, uh, taking breaks. So he's and he's very protective. So um, whatever I'm trying to do, if it's backing or anything, and sometimes other drivers get into like a rush and they want to go around you or go behind you, and you know he's very quick to go up to them and let them know, hey, you started. Someone had to teach you how to drive, so be a little bit considerate of, you know, new people learning how to drive themselves. Um, he's also taught me how to, you know, protect myself as far as being out here as a woman. I'm only five foot two. I weigh about 130 pounds, so um, you can hardly see me over the over the steering wheel, but. Um, um, I got a bat with a flashlight on it. I use it to check my tires and I also use it if I'm going out at night to the bathroom or anything like that. Um, uh, he also gave me like a taser with a flashlight, but I'm scared I'm about, to, I'm going to tase myself, but, um, I take that with me as well. And also like when I leave, if I go out to the bathroom at night or something like that, just to, um, not, uh, let him know so you know if I'm gone for a long period of time then you know he'll know to look for me or something like that but I haven't seen like we stay in well lit parking lots and nothing too much goes on um, a lot of them have fences around them so only trucks can get in and um, and but I haven't seen like what they say about women coming up to the trucks and all that kind of stuff, I haven't seen that. Um, I have seen that, you know, they sell cologne out here, they sell movies out here, they sell 
tires out here. You have people asking, come do your uh, rims. Um, but, um, but other than that, that's basically about it. Nobody really bothers you. We keep the doors locked, keep the keys on us. Um, I've been driving about 680 miles a day every day and um, and uh, last week we got in about 5600 miles which it was a good week um, he told me that um, um, that was the highest that him and a student has ever done before and um, I think the the gross that he made was like eight eighty three hundred or something, and the net that he brought home for the week was like thirty six something like that. So that was a real good week for him. Um, I wanted to prove myself to show you know that I'm a good driver and he could depend on me. I drive from. Uh, 12 in the afternoon to about 12 at night. I usually take a break about four hours at, into my shift and I uh, do my 30 minutes and then it resets for another I think six hours so I'm dr driving a total of 10. Uh, I've been learning how to do my trip planning um, which is very important because uh, you can't depend on the GPS. GPS will lead you on a street that ain't even there. So uh, it's very important to plan your uh, trips and to know where you're going to stop um, like for gas and uh, things like that. He's been teaching me about the lease purchase program. I've been keeping the books, um, keeping the receipts, um, doing the way scales, uh, keeping um, track of everything as far as at least, you know, being your independent contractor, keeping up with the miles, the fuel charge, trying to find the best places to buy gas. Uh, he lets me use his card and things like that to purchase the fuel. I put the death fuel in. I learned how to do my uh, landing gear. Uh, I can couple and uncouple a trailer. I can back it up and um, get it connected. I can also unconnect it as well. I inspect the trailer. Uh, one time I found that, you know, my headlight was out, my one of my parking trailer lights was out, so we had to go and get that fixed. Um, right now we have a, like a, uh, uh, something wrong with the tire, but, um, but other than that, he's been letting me, um, pretty much figure it out, you know, because I'm not going to have someone there that's going to help me all the time so I need to learn how to do these things by myself so that's what he's been letting me uh, do it's not that uh, difficult um, the gas I put that in um, the release arm I use that to uncouple the trailer um, that extended arm I also um, um, able to get the landing gear up and down um, I'm also able to uh, wash my windshields. It's kind of hard because I'm so short, but I'm able to get it done. I keep my windows clean. I make sure I keep the cab clean. I'm a fanatic about that. Um, uh, let's see. Backing, a lot of times um, I try to find somewhere that um, it's off to the side that's easy for me to back up into if 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 I have to but a lot of times I've been finding places that I can just pull right into because the time I drive is usually at night where the um, the uh, the the truck stops are full so in the daytime you really don't have a problem parking because everybody's driving during that time um, the lows we've been getting, um, like, um, pick up creamers and M&M's and, um, dry food stuff, um, meats, things like that, things that are refrigerated. I learned how to, uh, 
do the temperature to make sure the temperature is right and how long it takes to um, cool off if you get in meat or something like that. I also um, um, I do the mileage. I do see how much um, uh, fuel we get into the gallon, which is about right now 6.8. Uh, I love cruise control. Um, I, we drive about I drive about 65 miles per hour because he says like after that you just really throwing away gas. We have plenty of time to make it to our destination. Usually we make it a day early, so there's not really a rush on getting to where you need to be um, and as soon as we get it there uh, usually it's like a, a drop and hook so you're just dropping it off and hooking up to another trailer taking it somewhere else um, I've been to a couple of the, of the terminals and I must say that the one in Jackson is the best um, I haven't been to the one in Atlanta, but I have been to Lancaster, Portage, Indiana, um, um, and I haven't been to Dallas or out west yet. Um, it's getting kind of cold here because, like, you'll be in Texas one minute and it's hot, and then you drive and drive and drive in, and before you know it, it's 50 degrees in Maryland or something like that. So. You have to be prepared for the weather changes. Um, I'm almost through. So uh, when I get back, I have a, a test that I have to take. It's open book, so it shouldn't be that hard. I've been keeping up with my log books manually and also through the Qualcomm, which, you know, basically does it for you. I'm able to go through the way stations. That's fun. Um, but a lot of times we don't have to go through because we always get that green light to keep going. Um, I'm able to slide my tandems. I know about like when I'm heavy or if I'm over on my, over on my steer axle that I have to move them so I can shift the weight. Um, and I, I, weigh, I, I, I can weigh myself at the weight scales uh, with no problems to make sure that I'm not over in any, uh, any, any way because sometimes the loads can be, most of our loads are very heavy and close to weight but I haven't had any problems with the scales. Uh, it's a good thing that we get the pre-trip pass too because you don't have to pay for any tolls. Um, I did get a chance to go see, uh, there's a place in Louisiana called Tiger Gas Station, and they actually have a live tiger there, so that was pretty neat. Um, I went to a place called Big Cabin, and um, the food there is wonderful. Uh, also, we went to a truck stop, like, it's like a huge truck stop, it's in Iowa, I think it is. But it's really nice, and you can get anything that you want there. I can't wait to start um, purchasing my things to put on my own truck. But I was just trying to condition myself for when I'm by myself that I'm able to do the, um, the miles that I need to do. And it seems to be like, you know... Once you're listening to, um, I listen to the Pandora, we got the uh, satellite in here, and I listen to a station on there that's called Road Dog Truckers that tell you all kinds of information about the trucking. Um, and when you listen to those things, it just seems like time goes by really quickly. So, you know, the miles go by quick before you know it, you done done two, three, four hundred miles. So, um, mostly I've just been driving and getting me some rest and sleeping. Um, I met a lady that's been in trucking for over 18 years. She was so funny. She was just telling me different things, uh, how to protect myself, like, um, um, carry me some hairspray with, a, with a lighter you can use that as like a flame or something press put the lighter under the hairspray and it'll shoot flames she was telling me to carry a bottle of ammonia with water so if anybody walk up on you you can spray them in the eyes with the ammonia and that'll stop them um, she was telling me about uh, 
how to get the love bugs off the truck like use coca-cola bottles and things like that but she was so funny right now she's driving um convention so she goes around to all the shows and sets up at the convention centers and things like that which she really loves um i'm building a resource of people like for people that work at different companies um, people that's been on the road for a long time because these people can really help you out I did get lost one time in the Chicago area um, I was supposed to go around Chicago and I ended up trying to go downtown Chicago and that turned out to be um, let's just say nerve-wracking um, I had to actually people just don't realize you in a truck and it's not like you're going to be in a win-win situation when you in a truck um, and you in a car uh, the truck is going to win um, every time every time the truck is going to win and if you get in the way of that you know we're going to sit there so obvious thing to do is just to back up so I can get through and you can get through because if you don't back up and I can't come around the corner we both sitting there until somebody decide what to do because I'm not backing up an 18 wheel it's just not gonna happen um, but mostly people are considerate of 18 wheelers and they know to get out the way and not to be you know following behind them or just cutting in front of them because you know you have a stopping point that you know you just can't stop on a dime like a car it takes longer for a truck to stop and some people don't realize it. they just cut off in front of you and they just don't realize how much they risk their life when they do stuff like that when you see a 18 wheel on the road the best thing to do is just to get away from it don't even be around it don't try to drive in front of it don't try to drive behind it don't try to stay over in the um side where the blind side is because it's not worth risking your life uh being around such a huge vehicle and i mean so far i've saw i've seen two i want to say two wrecks one was a trailer that turned over that um they were supposed to be going like 20 20 miles per hour around the curve and when it says 20 miles per hour you should really be going 10. well i guess they figured they didn't need to do that and the trailer turned over and it was over on the side of the road all i could see was the state trooper um just going off on this person they had the driver in handcuffs I, you know i'm glad the driver was okay but his career is basically over i mean he's not going to be able to uh work for another company all he had to do was slow down and a lot of times uh you see these accidents um after 12 o'clock they're not like in the daytime i haven't seen the accident in the daytime yet but they're mostly at night people get tired people start swerving in and out um, and I thought everybody had to be on their headphones in order to you know be on the phone or whatever and you be riding by truckers and they be on their cell phones trying to text the back of the trailer going like this and but it's not I notice it's not like the large companies like you know Swift Warner um KLM um uh uh night it's not a big company it's like these independent lease people that I don't know where they get their trucks from um but they just go out and get a truck and just drive and just they're the most unsafe people that that I've ever seen because they just don't care um um it's ridiculous but uh and and let's see but that's the only thing i've been seeing it's just like these lease purchase or these trucks that don't have names on them or something like that there was a pile up of like five trucks i think it was on 35 coming to texas and again one o'clock in the morning 
and um and and they was following each other they were so close behind each other that somebody stopped and when that person stopped it it was like a chain re reaction the other four or five trucks ran into each other so they had the ambulance and everything and the whole highway shut down for that one but it's just so easy just to slow down and to pay attention and if you're tired just get off the road man it's just it doesn't make sense to 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 do all those things and then to be texting a headset is maybe what eighty dollars seventy dollars get a headset and and you can listen to your music you can even have voice command to have the headset dial your uh number for you so um it's just no excuse i don't think and 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 it's just you're responsible for that big old eighty thousand dollar weight and you want a text message you want to be on your phone talking nothing's that important i mean because you can take your eyes off the road for like a second and your trailer is somewhere over on the other side and you sitting there wondering how in the world it got there so but um safety is uh uh, uh with klom i'm telling you if you say that you don't think it's safe for you to drive they will uh, not push the issue of you um, delivering that load. They will find somebody else to do it. You need to get you some rest. Because um, if something happens and, um, and, and you're tired and you didn't say anything, you know, that's, that's your fault. So you need to say something and get you some rest. And once you rest it, get your load and get on the road and keep going. But I wanted to come in and check in with everybody. And thank you for my new subscriptions. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to. A lot of times I can't get back right away. But as soon as I see it, I'll try to uh, message back. Uh, because a lot of times right now I'm just driving. But right now I'm in the sleeper on the um, top. Uh and i think we're going to be here for tonight because we're supposed to go i think to colorado tomorrow uh we had a load to go to colorado but we're not going to make it because um we can't uh it's it's like 800 miles and they need it there in the morning at a certain time and it's already like nine o'clock so there wasn't a way that we was going to be able to make it so it was a judgment call my trainer made the decision that we would uh, not take that load and get another load so we're just waiting um to see what the next load is um right now we're at the flying jays in waco texas just got out the shower and i tell you what a shower really does the body good so i'm tired i'm gonna get me some sleep get back on the road tomorrow get this training finished and we'll be taking a video of my new truck i gotta come back and go to orientation for lease purchase for three days and then i'll be um getting my truck so talk to you later Bye.